As my hero reaches its final act, a large driving force in the narrative is the discussion on the broken nature of the superhero society. It is a world that creates a system of elitism and forces some to become rejects, which makes those rejects rebel against the world itself. The story dwells deep into the reasons as to why the world is this way. I do believe there is a reason for this. However, this reason is far more complex than the villains make it out to be. Now, let me make clear that my explanation is never set verbatim in the story itself. It is rather a invisible force which can be ascertained from the many details we get from the world which heavily imply its existence. This idea is something I have named the superhero industrial complex, a concept that goes hand in hand with the politics of my hero and bleeds into every aspect of the world in the worst way possible. To better explain this concept, let's define it while also giving a myriad of examples to reinforce it. Before we even begin, what is the superhero industrial complex? While this word should sound similar to some of you, because it is based on the military or prison industrial complex. At its core, the industrial complex is defined as a socioeconomic concept wherein businesses become intertwined in social or political systems or institutions, creating or bolstering a profit economy from these systems. In other words, it's when two institutions become linked for their own economic and political benefit. A very good example of this would be the prison industrial complex from the US. In this system, the US government and for-profit businesses work together to worsen the prison industry. The main reason why this is is because both parties benefit from mass incarceration. This history is extremely long and depressing and has roots in the very beginning of US history. However, I don't have time to speak on it now. I will leave some resources in the description for anyone who's interested. The main point I'm trying to make here is that the industrial complex phenomena can be applied to my hero. The system of superheroes is inherently intertwined with Japanese government, which leads to a large amount of negative effects, which can mainly be seen on a societal level. Here's a quick overview for those who have forgotten. In the beginning of the My Hero world, before there were superheroes, it was complete havoc. People used their quirks for whatever they wanted, which caused massive civil unrest. That's when vigilantes came onto the scene to help with the situation. However, they were independent. To better control the situation, governments then decided to officially license those vigilantes to work for them, and therefore legalize their operations. The first country to do so was actually the US, and then everyone eventually just followed suit. But once things finally stabilized, it is pretty clear that the world of heroics was intertwined with politics. And I think it's from this point where things went downhill. Because at that point, heroics was tied with capital. Heroes had to get licensed to even perform heroics, and some of them would even create agencies, which turned the whole thing into a profession rather than a good act. But that wasn't the main problem. The main issue was this became very successful very quickly. This is never said, however, we can basically deduce that most hero industries most likely contributed massively to the overall GDP of their countries. Moreover, heroes became tied to the military and would therefore contribute to their affairs. Events such as the hero billboards charts turned heroes into idols which would inspire young children to follow in their footsteps, which in the end would create a never-ending supply of heroes who they could exploit for military power or economic gain. So I think from here I've basically established what the superhero industrial complex is and how the superhero industry and the government work together to essentially profit off each other. But I think I'd like to use this moment to ask a simple question. Let's say, for example, that a villain was right, and that the superheroes are the real problem here. Do you think if this fact became undeniably true, that the government would actually try to change that? Well, they probably wouldn't. Remember, the superhero industry helps massively with their own affairs. Therefore, they have stakes in keeping this industry running as long as possible, regardless of how it affects the rest of the world. And it does affect the rest of the world in many, many ways. And this influence can be essentially felt on almost every level. 
what I mean by that is the superhero industrial complex helps to reinforce hierarchies within the world. And they essentially do this by establishing a narrative about superheroes and what they represent. For example, let's go back to the prison industrial complex. This system only functions if every citizen believes a pre-existing narrative about said system, regardless of any other darker intentions. The same is true about the superhero industrial complex. The, the narrative being that everyone who's in the system are just heroic people who want to make a difference with their quirks, and anyone who disagrees is essentially wrong. This narrative masks some of the worst parts of their society. There is this extremely fascinating quote from the movie Incredibles, where the main villain says, Super. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. When everyone's super, no one will be. And many people have taken this quote to apply it to My Hero Academia. In a world where everyone is super, super is just normal, right? Which makes sense. But there is essentially a way deeper problem of this mentality. In the world where quirks are essentially the norm and make you a regular human, anyone who doesn't have a quirk would essentially be less than. It's this extremely fascinating use of the anthropocentric view and applying it to superheroes, sort of a super anthropocentrism, a system which would essentially oppress anyone who doesn't immediately apply to it which doesn't just apply to animals, but anyone who isn't super. And we see this effect in full motion, especially in the early episodes of My Hero Academia. When Deku has no quirk in the beginning, people tend to make fun and harass him for that fact, to the point where it seriously messes up his own internal worldview of who he is. Moreover, I think this idea of a super anthropocentrism is really fascinating because it doesn't just apply to people with powers, it applies to people with powers who are human. This fact is rarely if ever touched in the show, but there clearly is some discrimination against people who don't look human. Essentially, people who fall under the criteria of mutants. This fact is touched upon a bit more in the manga, but it is shown that they are the targets of hate crimes for their appearance. These people, just because they don't look human, are essentially harassed and sometimes killed for it. Essentially creating a new level of bigotry, which is extremely prominent in the My Hero Academia world. And I find it so weird that it's never, if it's rarely, if ever touched upon, because it's clearly something that happens a lot. I mean, there even exists a, essentially a hate group who tries to attack mutants. However, it's only mentioned a few times and then brushed on the rug and just never mentioned again. So essentially, the super anthropocentrism attacks and oppresses groups of people who don't fall under their criteria of superhumans. But you see, that's the thing though. It's not just people who have quirks who tend to be not harassed or discriminated against. This narrative of superhero and villains have essentially morphed how people see quirks. Therefore, there are people who are labeled as criminals and deviants just because of their quirks which, as you can imagine, probably leads to a large amount of body dysmorphia problems, since many quirks are taught to be essentially part of who you are. Therefore, if your quirk is wrong, for you essentially start believing that you are wrong. And you see, here's the bizarre part. It's usually people who fall under these categories of oppressed who end up becoming villains. Now, you could take this idea and go a bit deeper than that. Because you could start to notice a pattern here. You notice that these people who are essentially rejected due to how their world function end up becoming the villains, which then again just reinforces this entire narrative of heroes and villains that people can essentially aspire and grasp onto. So essentially, it would be in the government's best interest to keep these people existing for as long as possible, since this only perpetuates the necessity of heroes in this world. And this is the main point I'm trying to make. The superhero industrial complex is a system that perpetuates this infinite song and dance between heroes and villains. A song and dance manufactured mainly by the government to maximize their own economic, military, and political influence. What's so fascinating about quirks is what they represent from a political and sociological standpoint. Many characters in My Hero believe that what's wrong with the world is quirks in general, but I have to disagree there. 
quirks aren't the problem, they simply exaggerate the already pre-existing problems. Because seriously think of what I've spoken about so far. Governments holding a tight grip on institutions for their own profit, anthropocentrism, and feeling like you're an outcast due to the standards of your own society. These things aren't issues that exist due to quirks. These concepts already exist in our world, but quirks tend to exacerbate them to a brand new level. The real solution to solving the deeply seated issues about the superhero society isn't to remove quirks, but to essentially reconstruct the system around quirks, therefore making a more balanced and equal world for everyone. Thanks for watching, I guess. Subscribe if you want to.